I'm a big fan of stories that have to do and like old buildings that have like a weird history, whether it's spooky or historically significant, maybe a major event happened there. So if you have a thriller that has those elements to it, I might just want to read it. And so today we are going to talk about The New Couple in 5B by Lisa Unger. This is a thriller. It takes place in New York City in an old historic creepy apartment building. The story follows this couple, Chad and Rosie. Chad is an aspiring actor and Rosie is an author and she's had some mild success with her first book. And right now they're kind of between jobs. Rosie is trying to uh, get a proposal for her next book in and, you know, just trying to do the grind to make that money. And Chad is, he's doing theater and whatnot, so he brings in some money, but not a ton at the time. And living in New York City is really expensive. So they're kind of just shuffling along and barely making it at this point. They've also been taking care of Chad's uncle, which is basically his one of his very few family members that he has. And his uncle ends up passing away. When this happens, you know, because they were with him through his dying days and took care of him. And the uncle ends up changing his will, which originally he was going to leave his really fancy apartment in this famous building on Park Avenue. He was going to originally leave it to his estranged daughter. But since Chad and Rosie took care of him through up until his dying days, he decides to leave the apartment to them. Well, <laughs> this may create some animosity between the daughter, and this couple. And this building that they're going to move into has quite the unsavory history. Like the architect who designed it jumped off the roof. There's a bunch of suicides that have happened there and murders. And it's very strange. And then you start getting into like digging into some of the history. And it turns out several of the people who originally like lived in this building had a uh, kind of like psychic backgrounds and we're into astrology and all this different stuff. And it seems like most of the people who live there are artists or musicians or doctors or just very creative and interesting, intelligent type people. When they get this apartment, it seems like it's totally going to be a blessing because they were struggling to get by with their current apartment. And so they're going to move in here, but it's still all these maintenance fees they have to pay and whatnot. So they move in, things start to look up. Chad gets a job that he'd been vying for. He's going to be on this new show and he's going to star in it. And so that's good. That's going to bring in some money. Rosie gets approved on her second book. That's going to bring in money for them. So they're going to be good for a while. And if they do need to, they can sell this apartment, which will go for somewhere around $5 million. So they'll be okay either way. But they're going to live in this apartment and where it seems where their finances are right now, they probably can have a good six months before they really have to start worrying about like money is, and if they keep the jobs that they're heading towards, they should be okay. So they move in and for a while, everything seems great, right? As it should, you know, Rosie and Chad, they've been married for maybe a year. They're trying to get pregnant and the next door neighbors are super friendly. They're very nice. They bring them food. They welcome them with open arms. Everyone in the building seems very nice. And all, like I said, very eclectic, artistic kind of community of people. As things progress, you still have the daughter of the uncle who is pissed that they got this apartment. She shows up and she's all mad and she had been yelling at Rosie and Rosie's like, ah, what? I, I don't. When this happened, Rosie didn't even know about it. She had no clue. And this is how she finds out and starts basically like yelling at her. Sorry, I need to backtrack a little because I should have made this clear. And so she's super pissed off. And Rosie's like, well, should I have Chad call you back? Because I didn't know anything about this and whatnot. Eventually, the cousin comes over to the apartment and is like, I'm going to sue you guys. I'm calling my lawyer, this, that, and the other. And then... She had called Rosie again at one point and she's like, I need to tell, she's like, first of all, let me apologize for the way I've been behaving, da 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 da, but I need to tell you some stuff about your husband that you don't know. And she's like, okay, well, all right, I guess I'll come meet up with you. And she has this box of stuff that was 
the father, the estranged father from the daughter, he had been keeping stuff about the daughter's life and had all these newspaper clippings. He had a letter he had wrote to her, just I think probably kind of an apology letter of not being there throughout her life and being a crap bag father and all that stuff. And so Rosie's like, decides she'll take the box and she'll go and see what the heck this person could possibly tell her about her husband because her husband came clean to her about a lot of stuff in his life. She ends up going to meet up with the cousin and when she goes there, she brings her friend along with her, and which is good because it's in kind of a weird industrial area. And they go there and the doors open and they walk in. It's like this big studio. And the cousin is a photographer, apparently, and has done really well with that. Her father also was a war photographer. So I guess photography kind of runs in the family. And so they get there and they're looking at some of the photos and whatnot. And then like, she sees a few photographs of her husband who posed nude and it's like isn't that a little weird that he posed nude for his cousin ew okay first of all that ain't right apparently it's fitting to his personality you're an actor you're desperate for money okay sure make up excuses for why he might have done this sure but then like she finds more in the dark room and still like the cousin is nowhere to be found at this point and she's like okay so further into the studio and then unfortunately they find the cousin who has uh been hung or hung herself or maybe it was a murder we don't know and certain people were missing in action when this happened at the times that it could have possibly happened so stuff starts to get weird so all of a sudden she's out of the way all these suspicious fingers start pointing at the husband and so Rosie's like, you know, just denying that it could ever possibly be her husband. A few more mysterious deaths end up happening as well. And I don't want to get too into it because I don't want to give away too much of the story, but it's a super fast paced thriller. They flew through it. I loved it. I like the characters. I love like the dark elements to it. I love like the history of the building and the creepiness of it. It was a super fun story. As a setting, I feel like New York City has so much grit and character and persona that anytime a story is set there, I'm usually a fan of it, especially with old apartment buildings, you know, with like the weird histories and you get like all the old ornate design, you start picturing it in your head. They have, you know, a doorman. There's always some weird doorman too in these stories. There's a weird doorman in this story that, uh, does he sleep? Is he always there? I don't know. But there are, yeah, you'll see if you read it. It's it's great. I really enjoyed it. If you like thrillers, if you like something fast paced, if you like old weird buildings with weird histories, it's kind of spooky that takes place in New York City. The new couple in 5B might just be for you. And if you like stories like that, a book that I loved that had a similar vibe, but it's way weirder and way more like kind of like paranormal, creepy is Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. Fan. Fantastic. I think I liked Nestlings better than this book, but this book was still really freaking good. So if you like something like this, you may also love Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. So you'll want to stick around because that will be the next video coming up. And we had fun hanging out today. Hit that subscribe button. Come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.